Hello and welcome back to the Mega Man Life miniseries. In this video, we're going to give the player its first weapon, which is just going to be the basic bullet. And we're going to be utilizing change animation set to do this. Now we set up the animations in the last video. So if you haven't seen that, you might just watch the first part of that where we set up the animations. But with that said, let's get started. All right, so here's where we left off in the player object where we improved the basic controller of the player. Now we want to add its first weapon. Now, a very common way to do this is to say, add another state here, and you would call this fire weapon. And then you would have a link from idle to fire weapon. You would be able to do it from fall to fire weapon and from walking to fire weapon. And you can tell that this is going to get really crazy really quick. So the whole point of this series is to actually show a better way of handling this. And we're actually going to create another object to be the gun. All right. So first off though, we need the bullet. So let's create our bullet animation. We're just going to call this weapon one basic. And then we're going to grab the weapon one basic norm. I'm going to hit okay. Now I'm just going to click okay here. We don't need any animation sets here. The one thing I am going to do is I'm going to center the animation. And just while we're here, I will go ahead and center the, the, the center pixel. I'm going to click off or delete these detections right now. And we're just going to call this one the basic, or actually this one is the normal, because there's going to be a few versions of this basic one. You're going to have a normal one, a charge shot as well. And we are going to give these directions since this has a little bit of a tail, kind of like it's moving. We want to give it a direction. Otherwise you can actually just leave it the same and it won't matter. Like the normal Mega Man bowl, it's just the same. It's just an oval. So you wouldn't have to change anything at all. Now I'm going to copy paste this one, give it the next direction and we will flip it. All right, so our bullet is set up and now we can start to make the gun for it. Well, our bullet's only set up in the animations. We'll set it up here in a minute. So now let's make the gun for this player object. So I'm gonna add a new object here. We're gonna call this the player gun. We're going to give it the weapon one basic and this will be important in some cases like charging and stuff like that. For the most part, this isn't gonna have an animation but we will need it to have one or two in particular cases. Now, this is gonna be a problem. Right now, we only have two groups. We have the player group and the enemy group. Now, we do not want this to be the player group. And the reason why is this is gonna be, this object's gonna be hanging at the barrel of the player. And so if we have something that is moving towards the player group, we don't want it to start to move towards the barrel because it's going to select, it's going to move towards the closest player group unless you lock specific um, object, which is not always convenient. So we're actually going to leave it player group right now. We're going to take away all of its detections because this technically isn't detecting anything. And we're going to hit okay. Now, before we go any farther, I'm going to add a group under group management. And we're going to say player attack. So we have this new group now that's called player attack. And I'm going to hit okay. And we're going to go to this object and we're going to change the player to a uh, player attack. And we'll hit okay there. And I'm going to actually leave the sprite on for right now so we can see a little bit of how this gun is going to be attached because we don't want to control this one. We just want it to be controlled based on what the player is doing. So we're going to go to the player. We're going to click on the cog wheel. We're going to set connect object. And then we're going to connect this player gun. Select the player gun. Now I'm going to leave it centered or actually, no, we're going to use a connection point. So yeah, I'm just going to click on this connection point because I know that I'm going to use it. But the important thing here is that we're going to make it into a child. And by making this into a child, we can go to the player gun and go to the parent child relationship tab. We can see that it will stick to the parent 
and will also take the parent's direction, which is important. I have a video on this tab if you need to look further into it. But what we need to do next is actually set up connection points in the player animations, this connection point right here. So I'm actually going to rename this connection point and I'm gonna call it the gun position. And since it's not really a good idea to place the connection point in this idle state, I'm going to change the animation set to number two where the barrel's there. And now I will click add a keyframe and there's the connection point and I'm just going to pull it down where I think it will work. We'll try it right here and see how that works. Now that we have it in position, I'm going to copy it and I'm gonna to go to the right. Now, the problem with flipping this early is that we actually took away any potential to flip it. If you'll, you'll see when I copy paste it, it's gonna put it right where it's actually at. It doesn't put it where it's flipped value is. So if I delete this and then we actually unflip it, I can then paste it in and then reflip it. So if you ever need to do any of that, you can just do it real quick. I'll come to the jump one and I'll add this real quick. I'll just paste it just right there, looks good. Now, since this is a new value, I'll copy it. I will unflip the right, I will paste it, and then I will reflip the right. And now we'll go to walk. Now walking here is gonna be a little different because we have some frames where the, the barrel is lower. So we're gonna to wanna to be specific. So this first frame here, I'm pretty sure we can actually get away. Nope, we can't. We're gonna to need to bring it down right here. So then we're just gonna pan this around. That one, the bullet stays the same, that keyframe. Now we'll go to the next keyframe. That's where it gets a little lower. Now we can't just move it. It will move the original. We actually have to click right here and click add a keyframe. Now we can move it and that keyframe will be different according to what frame it's on. So then we'll go back to here and then we'll, I'm pretty sure I could just copy paste. Oh, but I still have to move it anyway. So <laughs> didn't really work, but all right. So now we have that one and we can play and you'll see it loops properly. And in this one, since it was a little kind of tedious setting these ones up, I can just delete the right, copy paste a new right take these frames and flip them. All right. Now with this setup, with the connection points established, with the object connected at the connection point, the gun position, this should be all that we need and we should be able to see exactly where the gun is. So there's our gun and we can see that it's at the, where the barrel is gonna be at all times. So this is where we will call all of our bullets from. This is where our input for firing will be and everything. So let's start making that happen. The first thing we wanna do is we want to make a sort of processing. So we're, we're ready for input. So that's gonna be the name of this first one. We're ready for input. And this is gonna change throughout the uh, mini series. So just be aware of that. Now, the next thing that we need, oh, let's make sure that we click not affected by gravity. This is always, you'll notice that it didn't matter because it is a child, but still it's very safe practice for these side view projects. Now, when we fire the bullet, we'll just simply say fire the basic normal shot. Okay, so we'll fire the basic, or let's be specific, a little more specific. Weapon one, basic normal. Now, now that we know that they work as far as we know where they're positioned, we don't need, or at least I hope we don't need these animations. But what we do need is a link to fire. And that is gonna be when, we'll just say when X is pressed. Okay, on press means that the X was just pressed in this action. We could add some frame uh, input forgiveness if we need to. So I'm just gonna click okay here. So now we need to actually fire the bullet in here. So to do that, we got to create a bullet first. So we're just gonna say weapon one, basic, normal, cause that it's a normal shot. We're going to also give it the weapon one basic. 
this is also going to be a player attack group. And for right now, I'm just going to get rid of all the detections for it. And so usually in a bullet, you'll have some sort of a seeking just for a, a very basic bullet. And then you will have some sort of destroy. So this is where you will destroy the object. And usually you don't have the animation while it's doing it. We'll also want not affected by gravity and not affected by gravity. And we'll just say that when this bullet goes off the camera by a tile set or by one tile, which is a 16 by 16, then it will destroy. So it's seeking. We'll also give it a little faster setting here. So six by six, we'll say, even though it's only moving horizontal, but that's fine. Basic movement. And so that is our simple bullet. This will work for what we're testing right now. So now we'll go back to the gun and we'll add bullet settings. And we will add the weapon one basic normal. Because remember, we're going to have a basic charged. So that's why I add add the normal in there. Uh, we don't need to make it a child. And we want no limit because we want to fire as many as we can on the scene. And we do want to uh, set the shooting method to take over direction of the firing object. Now, we don't have an animation set in the gun, but if I'm remembering correctly, this is taking the direction of the parent player, whether it's firing or not, or whether it has an animation or not. So we'll see if that's actually the case, but I'm pretty sure we can get away with this. Okay, so our bullet is set up right now. This is all we need to do to set it up. And now we will actually see if that worked. We will say fire the bullet, the basic, and we don't need to do it from a connection point because we're actually just gonna do it from the center. If you don't select connection point, it just spawns from the center. And so we'll hit okay. And then I will just give it some kind of a timer for right now of let's just say 0.1. So every 0.1 second, I'll be able to fire this. All right, so let's see how this looks real quick and see if it even works. So I'm gonna press X and you'll see that it fires right and it fires left. So what I was telling you about the direction is correct. You can have a not set animation, but it's still taking the direction of the parent because it's a child. And we have that take direction set. Okay, so this is great, but one, his cannon is not out. So we need to change that. All right, so we know that when we are ready for input, we probably won't have the cannon out. So we're actually gonna use this change animation set and we're going to select the player because you can actually change animation set from another object. So we're gonna have this object control the player's animation set. So when he's ready to fire, we're gonna have animation set one, which is him more normal. Now, when we fire our weapon, I'm going to copy and paste this animation set. When we cop or when we fire the weapon, we want it to change to set two, which is the version of the cannon being out. So we're going to click OK on this now. And now this should give us a basic, the cannon will pop out when you shoot. So we can test that out and you can see there's the cannon and it shoots when you fire. Now this is something you might want. You might want the cannon to uh, shoot out real quick and then go right back in. But you can see also when you're walking, the cannon goes right back in. Now Mega Man, the cannon seemed like it stayed out a little bit longer. So you could actually fire while you're walking like this and it would actually stay out a little longer than just go back in. So what I found what I like to do is to let the cannon stay out a little bit longer to give you another chance to fire again before going back in. So we'll go ahead and do that. Basically, all that needs to happen here is for now anyway, just because we have the basic, this is all going to change when we do a charge, but I just want to show you, we'll start, you know, simply and, and work our way from here. So we can simply just do like a loop situation where we have the Fire weapon one, basic normal loop, and then just 
my habits, I usually call the loop back. Uh, I just call it a loop back for it. All right, so now that we have this, we can actually say that you can press X again to fire again, basically, without pulling in the, the or changing the animation set back to the original. Now with this, I usually want to give it a little bit of time as well. So at least like a 0.1 and then I'll copy and paste this back. So here's our loop of firing between this. Now I can remove the change animation set on this loop back. I can keep it on the loop because this change animation set, it's not really factoring anything. It's not changing the animation frame. We'll see that here in a minute. Let me straighten these up. All right, so we'll have the, the loop of the firing because we're still firing right here and then we're firing right here. But now in order to go back, instead of 0.1, let's just make it say 0.5. So if you're not firing for half a second, it goes back in. And then we'll also need it from this loop back as well. So basically you press X, you change animation set and fire. If you wait half a second, you're gonna go back to your normal animation set. However, if you press X again, you will continue to fire. And then say you're just in this state, if you wait 0.5 seconds, it will also go back to the original. So now let's try this one out and see how this looks. All right, now right away, this didn't work. And let's check the link here. Let's see, this link is right. When you do input and another condition, you have to make sure that you say change if all conditions are met. So that's where I messed up on this one, on both of these links. So they were just basically looping. All right, so now I'll fire. And you can see that the cannon stays out a little bit before it goes back in. So that way I can keep firing and it will look like it's out. And it for the idle, it really doesn't matter. But for the walking, it's just gonna look a whole lot better because now the cannon's out and you're constantly firing. And you'll notice, and then if I let go for half a second, it goes back in and then he just goes running. And he doesn't lose a beat. Like the frames are exactly the same. Change animation set, all it does is just replace the current animation sheet. It doesn't do anything with the current frames. So that's what's really nice about this method. So now our noob bot here can be just like Mega Man, except for he's a noob, right? <laughs> so, and I think that's all that we'll do for this video. We got the, we basically took the gun, we made it its own object into a child, and then we made that be the one that shoots the bullets, and it also changes the animation set of the player according to what state it's in. If it's firing, then it pulls out the cannon. If it's not, then it doesn't. And it's all possible because of the animations here when we set up these right here. And that's why the uh, animation set, if I go to animation set, need to be in the same position. Because remember, the walking had to be the same position in order to match up perfectly. So in the next video, we'll go over making a charge shot, which will change this up a little bit but it will all be good. We'll set up a charging animation and then a charged shot and go from there. We'll see you at the next video.